Now, today marks 60 years of Britain's best love soap, and to celebrate Corrie's landmark anniversary, we are remembering one of the street's most glamorous residents, Elsie Tanner. Well, to celebrate Coronation Street's 60th anniversary, I thought it's only fitting to go back to the 60s. What an iconic decade with history defining moments in science, sport, music, and television. When a young writer called Tony Warren came up with a new kitchen sink drama all about the lives of working class northerners. And why is he suddenly undesirable? What's he done? And don't look down your nose at me, you know, I'm not muck. A great idea. He needed a great cast to match. When Pat Phoenix arrived to audition, she gave it plenty of sass and was line perfect. She was exactly what Tony Warren was looking for. His Elsie Tanner had arrived. All I want to do is sit and soak my feet. Hey, Elsie, just about ready for the knacker yard. How would you describe the legendary Elsie Tanner? Feisty, red-headed, glamorous. She was a sex symbol for Coronation Street in the 60s. The best cook in Coronation I Street. I hear you only saying that because it's true. It is. I mean, I've sampled it myself, haven't I? Hey, watch it. If there was anyone from the past that I'd like to go on a night out with, it would probably be Elsa Tanner. <sighs> she was just, like, so ahead of her time, so it's really inspiring for other women to think, yeah, I'm going to wear that, or I can say that as well. Oh, I've had a vast experience with the male sex. <laughs> I'm going to write a book about it. Blousy is a very old-fashioned word, but I think she was blousy. In a back street in Salford, to be dressed in the way that she dressed, she was bringing sort of a different kind of fashion than perhaps Ina and some of the other ladies were used to. Good evening, Mrs. Oh, so she's all in her silks and she's all got her hair done. I'm more respectable in this dressing gown than I am in most of my frocks. Might be grotty, but there's a jewel in the middle of it. Blessed with beauty and passion, but cursed with a fiery temper. Now look, you'll make one move and I'll crown you. Oh, she definitely wasn't afraid to stand up for herself. Go jump in the cops, you <laughs> Her having a row with Ina Sharp on Coronation Street. <laughs> and her and Beth had some great ding-dong rows. You cheap foul mouth flute! Very, very strong scenes with two women firing at one another. I mean, Elsie had to be a redhead. She couldn't be anything other, could she? I'll drag you around this pub by that daft red wig. You're welcome to try, madam, any time. She was wronged by many a woman on the street. They thought badly of her. And I'm warning you, if you don't learn to keep that flaming line gob of yours shut, you're for the eye jump. You know when she's she's going to let rip because the hands go up and the chest goes out and the chin goes up and out it comes. Now listen to me, smacky bumps. You watch your tongue. This is my house. Forgot just how much sass she had. Get out! When she wasn't clashing with the women, she was chasing the men. Look, if it's all right for you to look at her birdie miniskirts and go, yum, yum, then I'm not going to be ashamed of liking to look at young men. If you count up Elsie's boyfriends, husbands, fancy men, well, she's pretty high in those polls of Corrie women, with a total of 21. At least we know we're not going to be disturbed, do we? Elsie was the typical archetypal top with a heart of gold. I love you. I was wondering when you'd ever get around to saying that. Men just, I mean, they just fell for her. Because I love you. Do you? And she fell for them, but mostly the wrong one. No, oh, get off. It was start with love and lust. I, Elsie Tanner, do take thee, Alan Patrick Howard. <gasps> but always ended in heartbreak. No husband, no fancy man. Nothing to look forward to. Oh, I just think that she's been very unlucky in love, bless her. Twice I've been married, and I think I prefer Ina Sharper's vision of loneliness to all the risks you take when you get married. I mean, it never went right for her. You just paint and mush! Elsie always ended up with some bad luck. Go on then, Avery, do what the hell you like! She needed someone a little bit more gentle, but she always went for the good-looking rogues. All I ever wanted was... was to be loved. With 20-odd million people tuning in every night to watch, Pat Phoenix wasn't just a small-town celebrity, she was a rock star. Pat Phoenix. She was like the Manchester Hollywood at that time of glamour women. 
she was, I'm sure I'm right in saying, as famous as the Beatles in the 60s. She wasn't shy of her fame, so she would be everywhere. Do you know, she absolutely loved being in the street and working with her was so much fun because she believed it. I mean, she was Elsie Turner. A true legend of the street whose legacy lives on. Why was it so great to show these types of characters on TV? Working class women had never been shown on television before. And suddenly, women who thought and felt like the women watching did. I've been mother, father, son, everything. I've looked after my son for the last 15 years. It's brilliant that Tony Warren wrote this kind of a character in 1960. It was the characters, actually, that we were all walking around and seeing every day. It's really inspiring to kind of see women at the forefront, and that's really what Corrie was about. I do think about them quite often, and that, you know, I'm treading in their footsteps, and. I hope they're pleased with what I do, what we all do now. Whether it's a queen of comedy, a battle axe, or a tart with a heart, these first leading ladies of the cobbles were trendsetters, setting the mould for television characters to come, showing the highs and lows of real-life northern women. I've loved that series. I've obviously known the characters, but not as deeply as that, mm. how I've got to know them. It's incredible, really, some of the stories. Pat Phoenix, when I was in, working in a shop in the summertime in Newquay, yeah. um, Pat Phoenix walked down the street and came into the shop with Len Fairclough, who was Peter Adamson. Yeah. And, uh, and it was as if the Queen and Prince Philip had walked. She was a rock star. She was yeah. a rock star. Amazing. Just amazing. Like, hordes and hordes of people outside. Yeah, incredible. Just incredible. Incredible.